Today we are in Lisbon, Portugal, and we will meet members of two ecological organizations, and they will tell us how is an eco situation in Portugal now. What are the strong and weak sides of the environmental movement here? grassroots collective called Cli Maximo. It's an open, horizontal, anti-capitalist collective for climate justice. Okay. It is a Portuguese organization? Yeah, it's based in, in Lisbon. It has local groups in Lisbon and in Porto. Okay. And um, what do you do? What's your ecological actions? Um, so Cli Maximo is based on the analysis that the root cause of the climate crisis is the capitalist mode of production, which means that we have to radically change the way we produce, we distribute, consume and manage the entire society and all the goods and services involved in it. We exist because uh, we dis we thought that in 2014-15 a group of people came together and we thought that, um, that there was no street mobilization, mass mobilization and civil disobedience component for the climate discussions in Portugal. So we, we formed Clima Maximo to make those things happen. So we organized marches, we organized uh, non-violent direct actions, we organized camps, action camps against fossil fuel infrastructure or otherwise. We are part of international networks that do similar work to, to us. We are also closely related to the Fridays for Future and Extinction Rebellion, but also other organizations like Endegelen in Germany, Reclaiming Power in the UK and so on. Uh, who, is, who are members of your organization? So the group is... Average person. So the group is open and, we, and meets weekly in announced meetings, so we don't really have a well-defined membership procedure. People who agree with the principles and the, the basic political stance of the group can simply show up in a meeting and we use consensus decision making, so whoever shows up in a meeting can actually propose whatever they want and also uh, raise concerns about what is going on at the moment uh, in, in the meetings. We are about 70 people. In total, um, demographically, mo like now it has changed a little bit with the Fridays for Future mobilizations. It used to be more like people in their 20s, 30s and a few people in their 40s. Now we also have a lot of people that are actually teenagers. Hello, uh, I'm Pedro. Um, I'm uh, from a Portuguese startup, Planeteers. It's not my company, I'm part of the team. And uh, it's been a, a very good uh, journey to these days until we are here talking with, uh, with you in a conference. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know that uh, the Pedro's company has like two main uh, uh, branches. Yes, it is market and you're going to do some big event. Can you tell us and about market and about the event? Uh, well, actually, um, Planetier started with... Uh, <laughs> um, with a new uh, with a new idea about sustainability with the, uh, Sergio and, and Carlos uh, long years ago and they always try to build a, a big project around sustainability um, the big uh, idea was about uh, create a, a connections between cities and uh, gamification uh, but after the web summit in 2016 actually it's making three years so far 
um, they decided to simplify the idea and then the Planet Ears Marketplace uh, was born after a couple of months uh, with a simple idea of connecting every consumer and every company that wants to have a more sustainable uh, consumption pattern. Uh, so, uh, who are your customers in Marketplace? <laughs> well, in the beginning the idea was totally uh, focused on uh, business to consumers, so consumers like uh, regular people like us, uh, and they are the, our main uh, customer. But after a couple of months, a lot of companies starting to come and talk with us and uh, want to buy this product. So nowadays we work in two sides, business to business and business to consumer. Yes. And what consumer can find uh, on, on Marketplace? What I can find if I... If I well, uh, uh, the idea is you can find, like uh, our slogan uh, <laughs> says, is all you can do for the planet in one place. So basically, uh, right now, it's more than uh, 200 companies already selling in our marketplace, more than 1,000 products, uh, and they are uh, diversified among more than 20 e-commerce categories. So everything from uh, fashion to foods to solar energy, uh, we want to have a very diversified uh, kind of uh, product. And every, all products are environmental friendly? Yes, that's yes. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's the, our main concern. Is we select uh, and evaluate every uh, product and every company. It, it just can be available on planetiers.com if it's uh, among our patterns. Mm -hmm. How do you check them? Basically, uh, we start with very simpler. We had a, um, a ten uh, criteria, ten criteria algorithm, yeah. uh, ten principles. They are in the beginning. They are very empirical. So basically, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, they have to be uh, like uh, certified. They have to have no no injury for people. Like they have to score at least four in ten. But right now we understand that that's not enough. We need more quantification of how sustainable they are, and we are working with uh, with. Um, student from Pakistan is developing a, a, his master thesis with us so we want to take this evaluation to a more quantitative algorithm yes. so it's a progress <laughs> work in progress what about the event which you plan in the day? well uh, the event uh, uh, it's Planet Year's World Gathering and uh, basically, uh, it was born for a small idea of connecting people and have, a, in the physical world, an event that could represent the community that we have in the digital world. So, uh, so far, this event is going to be in April uh, of 2020, and it's an event that we want to put all the ecosystem in one place, basically. So, we have in one side the startups and the entrepreneurs that uh, are developing new ideas around sustainability, products and solutions. Then we have uh, Planet Ears Market, which is all the companies that are already working with us in the marketplace, or they have developed new, new ideas, but mostly around uh, products that people and companies can use in nowadays. And the other side, we have the sustainable communities. Sustainable communities can be since municipalities, uh, cities, ONGs, Every organization that is doing an impact on this society, impact on this locality, has to be a, a stage and a, a, a spot to speak about and to be an example. So we have uh, an area just for them to in the event. You expect it to be an international event or it will be a Portuguese? It's an international event, yeah. like the, the name says. Uh, so far, mostly of the even the big uh, speakers that are going to speak in uh, or to to inspire in impact stage are, are international, like um, like Damon John from the American version of Shark Tank. Um, but we have uh, going to be uh, worldwide. Like our our name says, Planet Ears. It's uh, it's a focus on being worldwide and inspiring people all around. So the event has to be uh, the same thing. The same. <laughs>
environmental situation in your country and about what about the coal and the renewable energy because I know that Portugal uses like almost 100% renewable energy so look, don't, don't have such a big impact on climate change. So if I'm not mistaken, Portugal uses 40 to 50% renewable electricity yes. and electricity is around 20 to 25% of all energy. So in total, we are talking about 10% renewable energy in the entire uh, energy sector. Okay. Um, right. So a big chunk of the energy is based on coal, uh, around uh, around 20% of energy is based on coal. In there's Portugal a, in now, Portugal, yes. In Portugal at the moment, there's a good chunk that comes from gas, fossil gas. And uh, recent governments have been um, have been investing heavily on dams, which they consider are renewable. But every year we discover that they are less and less renewable because of the way they are because of the way they are built. You mean energy of waves? Yes. No, energy of rivers. Oh, hydroelectric rivers, power plants. Rivers, yes. yeah. So there's no electricity produced by waves in general, as far as I know. Um, there has been some investment in uh, wind energy and there's very little investment in solar. So in the energy mix, solar energy is very low, ridiculously low compared to the capacity, existing capacity. Um, consecutive governments have been talking about closing down the two coal power plants that we have in the country. Uh, in general, the discourse was that they would be closed down in the mandate of the next government, and never during the government. But the last mobilizations finally made it happen that the closing down of the coal power plants will happen during the during this government. At least this is what they declared. Okay, and uh, how how you will get energy? What what uh, what is the future? How you see Portugal will get energy from which resources? So there are no fossil fuels in Portugal. All energy already comes from outside anyway, independent yes. of whether it's yeah. oil or gas or coal. Oh, it is yeah. bought from outside. Yes. Uh, the only energy sources that exist in Portugal are oil, uh, are, are uh, sun and wind. And, and water. And water every, water every year less than the year before. So it has to be properly managed to be sustainable because Basically because climate change itself aggravates the situation with, with drought, which reduces the capacity of the rivers themselves. So if we build bigger and bigger rivers as the previous governments have been doing, the result it is uh, dry and drier and drier rivers, and therefore less and less energy produced anyway, but also other impacts on the on the ecosystems surrounding the rivers. Okay, so it affects not well ecosystems. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it affects not in good way ecosystems. Um, our understanding is that at the moment Portugal has an overload of hydroelectric uh, energy uh, than necessary for for a sustainable management of the of the energy mix. To ask you about environmental protection in Portuguese. You live here and you involve very strongly in this community. What do you think? How it is? How active are people? And uh, how if Portugal enough uh, environmental friendly? Country? Okay. Um, I think it's a um, it's a, a probably a ten year uh, change uh, happening. So. Like 10 years ago, maybe the most radical people would speak about sustainability. But nowadays, I think that's a good thing about um, people in general. It's like when someone starts and starts inspiring the others, uh, we can see that, for instance, in the last five years, a lot of new projects are building, a lot of new um, startups. They are, they are building and growing around this concept. And uh, the Portuguese... Uh, consumers are following the trend so we can see like even the big brands that were not much sustainable they are trying to adopt because the the consumer has the power nowadays so if people demand that uh, the companies or the governments to change the, um, we think that they will uh, have to 
have to, to go uh, around that, that demand. And I feel that the Portuguese society has been um, a big, a big uh, trigger, a big uh, driven uh, uh, power to change the, our society. I think that's the, in conclusion, um, next year Lisbon will be the, Europe, the green uh, capital, green European capital. And I think that's a, a proof that uh, our society is uh, demanding change and even the governments are going uh, by. Yes. Can you tell a bit more about the green city? Uh -oh. Lisbon green city. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm not uh, part of the municipality, but uh, Lisbon, uh, um, the, the mayor of Lisbon, it's, uh, uh, it's a planeteer. Uh, he has been talking about us and working with us uh, for a couple of years and supporting our work. And actually, Planet Years World Gathering is uh, one of the events that uh, the municipality of Lisbon is going to support in 2020 as one of the big celebration events for uh, an eco city or uh, a sustainable city. And I think uh, the I don't know the changes can be seen uh, uh, everywhere. For instance, in, um, in transportation uh, nowadays, most of uh, of uh, Planet Years team we, we use uh, the the city bikes. Or the or the scooters, or we basically uh, have more efficient uh, um, garbage systems in our neighborhoods. Or you can see like gardens like this one uh, growing everywhere because the um, the government or the municipality has been changing all the all the, um, the squares, all the streets nowadays. Have a what do you think is the biggest achievement and the biggest problem in ecology in ecology in Portugal? So when Climaxima was formed in 2015, there were 15 contracts to explore oil and gas in the, in the national territory. <coughs> we managed to cancel 13 of them in the last years. There are still two contracts missing um, and there's a local struggle together with the, with the national network of support and, and, and organizing and mobilizing around that issue. So the biggest success was that the government and the government and the, and the corporations have, have been insisting in these contracts, but we made it in, we made it into an impossible situation for them to continue. So 13 out of 15 were cancelled in the last year. How you made it? Just because you made demonstrations on the streets, they started listening. Um, we made demonstrations, direct actions, petitions, protests, a mixture of various tactics. Mostly grassroots organized, so for instance in the south of Portugal this was a big big issue where basically all the cities had their own local groups to, to force change and it created, um, it created a non-friendly environment for the local governments, the municipal governments, which had to decide between whether to agree with the national government, with the central government, or whether to agree with the local population. And they ended up choosing the local population, which made it even harder for the project to continue. Yes. I see. So people uh, supported the strong, yes? Support your organization strong, and you have a lot, uh, I understand, a lot of people who are not part of your organization, they still support this movement and they come to your demonstrations. Right. So, for instance, when I was talking about oil and gas, I'm talking about around 15 to 18 organizations, including Climaximo. I'm not talking yes. about Climaximo yes. as the main organizer, although we have been, because we are based in Lisbon, we had, we had access to uh, media coverage, so if we would call for an action, for a protest in Lisbon, and we would bring people from the lo local areas, that would have an impact. Also, we did a bunch of actions in the ministry and, um, and, and the corporate headquarters themselves, which are also in Lisbon. So, we have been mobilizing since 2015, organizing and mobilizing since 2015. When we started, we would organize marches that had 300 people. Uh, by 2018, we were marching with 2,000 people. And with Fridays for Future, we started marching with 20,000 people. Yeah. Uh, these are people that are mobilized, that go to the street and do actions on the street. Um, in general, there is a popular consensus on the, on the urgency tackling climate change in the society. This is shown through, um, through sociological statistics, sociological research, besides, uh, uh, besides what we have been doing. People have changed. Uh, they started really separate garbage. They started taking care more about the garbage. Yeah, I, I think it's, um, it's, it's, um, 
it's an inspiration uh, movement so usually it starts very small um, but uh, as long as you keep uh, and you believe what you are doing people gonna gonna follow that that uh, that passion or that inspiration of course we always have uh, garbage uh, selection or recycling on a lot of this stuff but mostly they were used like a, a guilty way or not so inspiring and I think nowadays even those systems they were so classical they have been uh, um, challenged to to be more um, more impactful on society and be uh, have put have people more working to, towards them than against them and I think as that uh, you see a lot of things like uh, of course um, the your 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 the money that you have in your pockets are always gonna have a, a, a important thing and about uh, being more sustainable sometimes is actually uh, products that are more expensive but the thing is it's not uh, about uh, buying more it's about buying with quality and products that have a long life um, a long life in, in average or it could be actually uh, more simple attitudes like uh, the recycling that we're saying or changing for instance like the other day I just met um, a couple with uh, four kids and they used to have two cars yeah. and now they just sell one car uh, and they, all of them use uh, um, or bicycles or public uh, transportation because the, the, the city just evolved and they just keep one car for you know the next yeah. set, set. So they decided to make it just because of uh, ecological reasons? I think it's uh, in a big change has always to be uh, uh, two triggers of course yeah. uh, it's uh, uh, in Planet Years we believe in sustainomics, which is a theory, a theory that uh, basically uh, supports that to, to have a um, sustainability uh, change, you have to be have three, three triggers basically. One is um, uh, the, the sustainable, the environmental, of course. The second has to be an economical, uh, and the third is the social. So they always been to connect. So you feel that you have been uh, social impact which triggers us. Uh, in the long term, you know that they are being more environmental friendly, which is, of course, we, everyone is uh, talking about it, and you feel that you have a responsibility for it. But the last case, we live in an economical world, so the economical trigger is very important to close this circle and make things sustainable in the long term. Um, yesterday I was on website, <laughs> and many speakers say, say that, um, that if we want to be environmental friendly, we have to suffer. Really, we have to suffer. We have really? to stop uh, using plastic. We have to maybe use reusable bottles and okay. put water in them. We have to more walk. We have more use bicycles and less use cars. We have maybe not to hit our apartment so strong, a bit less. Okay. And I want to, to know your opinion. What do you think? Really, we have to, to change our lifestyle so strong, or maybe business can just uh, make new, give new decisions. Okay, uh, that's a uh, very. Um interesting uh, question and uh, I think we probably want to put uh, the finger in uh, the problem uh, I don't think that's uh, sustainable in the long term because as an evolution point of view we always tend to do the thing with less effort we are lazy because uh, that's, uh, our that, nature. that's our nature that's how we save energy so we can uh, be more uh, feedable to survive so basically everything that's uh, uh, working it's making us more uh, less effort, less uh, energy spent. Uh, and the thing is, that's important to you say something like this in a in a entrepreneurship event, because I believe that's companies in an entrepreneurship that's going to save the planet. Because everything that's about a lot of effort, people will not will not stick in the long term. So that's a trigger for uh, entrepreneurs. That's a trigger for companies to develop new systems or develop new business models or develop new products around around those problems that want to make the life more easy in the long term and if they happen they will be more uh, sustainable they will be more social they will be more economical uh, available in the long term because if it's about being very radical and stop uh, consumism or stop uh, anything that they are doing in a very radical way without a without a option a very better option i think in the long term, we not stick because just the the more um, just the some the core of people will follow. Yes, the rest my part of people will not will not do it. Yes. Yeah, but.
but okay, that's a, that's a that's that's a very important topic, and I think that's more a, a trigger for people like us to keep working and develop new ideas and build a better world. What do you personally change in your life to be more environmental friendly? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, basically, uh, I don't uh, own a car. I never, I, I, I don't drive in general, and I yeah. try not to use it at all. Um, I always uh, do um, walking as I can, or uh, I use my bike for every every day. Yes, every, electric every, bike. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and uh, actually, it's not my bike. I don't even uh, own a bike. I yeah, I use the public uh, sharing uh, yes. system. Like limes. Uh, like uh, yeah, li limes are the scooters, but I use the Gira, which is the municipality uh, bike sharing system from from Lisboa. Um, and the thing, the next thing, it's about the things that we that I use in daily 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 basis, uh, like uh, the things that we that we own at the shop is like not buying as many by emotional triggers, but by because you need it. Or for instance, all my clothes that I don't need it usually I do I give them to or to support people or to uh, recycling systems that already uh, co collecting those 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 uh, clothes and giving a, a second life. Or for instance, in another day I was in a in an event. Uh, there's a, a small project. Yeah, like uh, like I was saying that I was in a yeah, doing a volunteer for a, a small project which is uh, Trocket. Basically, it's a, a shopping mall in the not so shopping mall, but like a shopping mall of flea, in a flea market, where you can go and you take everything that uh, you don't use or you don't want at home, like everything. You go there, uh, you put on the on the on the. You leave them. Uh, yeah, you leave them. They give you some uh, some. Uh, some tickets and then it's like you, I deliver 10 products no matter what they are so I can uh, pinpoint and choose 10 products from other other uh, other people it is cool. do you think government in Portugal does maximum what what they can do in situation um, so the government in Portugal and the governments in the world are not not doing the bare minimum of what is necessary to limit to uh, global warming by two degrees at the moment, the, there's a plan that was uh, decided upon by the, the by the previous government, which is also the same government now, the yes. same party. Their plan is to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. Yes. If Portugal does that, and if all the countries did something similar, uh, based on their respons historical responsibility and their capacities, we would have around 4 degrees Celsius uh, of global warming guaranteed. So what they're doing is basically to guarantee that things would go very, very well. At the same time, although they had proposed this, so for instance, in this plan, coal power plants would be closed down by 2030. Now, in the last weeks, they announced that they would close down in 2023, which happened just because of mobilizations on the streets. So I don't think that the government is doing the bare minimum to achieve anything. I mean, if we reached carbon neutrality in 2030, we would still have a good chance of, um, of passing two degrees Celsius for the yes. warming. Um, so given that, I think no one, no government in the world is doing enough to, to maintain a livable planet. About carbon neutrality, you mean about electricity? When we say carbon neutrality, we mean zero net emissions. So for the entire sector, we actually have a plan called the Climate Jobs Campaign. It's a campaign supported by trade unions, as well as NGOs, as well as local groups. Our calculations show that 100,000 public sector jobs in renewable energy, transport, energy efficiency, um, agriculture, forestry, and so on, 100,000 new jobs could reduce emissions by 70% in 10 years. So this would put us in, on the right track for, um, for carbon neutrality as quickly as possible. Do you see some changes in, in the transportation system in Lisbon? Because I see there are some electricity cars, there are some motorbikes, electrical motorbikes now. Do you see that it 
really become to be like a trend. Yeah. yeah. So when I came here, I rem uh, eight years ago, I remember one cruise arriving to the port of Lisbon. Now there are three. So every year, each one of them is a, is equivalent to the to to the old town, old family. So every day, two to three neighborhoods comparable to the city center where they want to visit, they arrive, they eat everything, and then they go back. Yes. Uh, a similar situation happened with aviation. So this for me is transport. It has been radically increasing for no actual real needs of individuals. It's just rapid consumption. And that came together with touristification. This produced a bunch of other services that previously were inexistent, like um, small, small carts that are sometimes gas, sometimes oil, but many times yeah, electric. Tuk -tuk. Yeah, tuk-tuk yes. services. That was not an existing, that those electric tuk-tuks did not replace a need. Previously, there was no such thing. This thing yeah, was created, and the same is happening with the, with um, most of the bikes, bikes, and, and they also now have uh, scooters. Yes. They are serving tourists because basically scooters are way too expensive for a normal person that lives in this. <coughs> it did happen in the last years that a large chunk of Lisbon people had to leave city center to go to the outskirts. And they started using public transport. Yes. Um, and very recently, if I'm not mistaken, this year, uh, there was implemented a reduction of the, what's it called, the monthly pass for for public transport yeah. was reduced drastically. So this was a victory that we had. Um, public transport involves everything that is in Lisbon, but also it was extended to the greater Lisbon, so the surrounding areas also managed to access, so access the city in ways that were un um, impossible before. So just to have, just to give you an idea, for each individual would pay around, for each individual who was not living in the city center would pay around 60 to 120 euros per month. Um, and now they're, they're paying uh, 40 euros. Uh, um, you said about the number of tourists increased and because of tourists it is like new sector of economy, as it tuk tuks and some more restaurants. Um, do you see it like negative side of negative changes? It's unproductive. It it doesn't serve anybody. Uh, it brings money to country. Yeah, it doesn't bring goods or services. It consumes the city and replaces it with money. So it for instance it takes housing and get gives money to some people. Not the people who had housing before, right? And so I know a lot of, for instance, people who have masters or PhDs who are doing guided tours. This creates a lot of precarious work also. Um, yeah, basically this the model that they implemented has nothing to do with the needs of people. It also does not produce development for anybody, right? You have a house. And that house becomes a hotel. Yes. That is not. That doesn't produce anything valuable for the society in general. What do you think? Mainly people in Portugal, maybe you. What eco products do you use? What is for sure you use like ecological, like soap, for example, or maybe clothes. Uh, how you choose more ecological things? And do you think a lot of people do? Does, do? So I bike everywhere. Uh, like bicycle? Bicycle, yeah. I go by bicycle everywhere. And I realized that in the city center, which I would consider anything that is within the circular uh, highway, it's the fastest way of transport, yeah. including car. So it is, the fast, it is not worth taking the metro, it is not worth taking the, the bus, it is not worth taking a car, which I think is a bad idea. I think I should be choosing bike for health reason over metro but at the moment metro is slower because it doesn't come on time there are always problems oh, wow it sounds <coughs> like so, uh, impossible usually subway is the best transport system yeah it's but, it's, but it's under invested and underemployed so it has less people working for maintenance yeah. there is very little investment in it uh, so for instance but that's a choice i made i i'm also part of a, a, a renewable energy cooperative 
Um, so I, supposedly I receive my energy from renewable, energy, uh, renewable sources. However, the legislation does not allow my cooperative to distribute the energy. So they are only capable of selling the energy to the uh, distribution monopoly who then gives it back to me, so I actually don't have direct control over what energy what goes energy? into my house. Um, otherwise, I live with minimum wage, which is, uh, for all practical purposes, around 550 euros. Mm -hmm. I don't choose... Uh, I don't choose more expensive products in general. I either cook at home, which is an ecological choice, um, but otherwise I choose the cheapest option in general. Yes, but the problem is with ecological things that usually they are not cheap. Usually clothes and all cheap products, it is plastic and some synthetic materials. And if you want to go ecological, usually you have to pay more. And, right. Uh, yes. right, because it's rationalized in a certain way that if you produce something in the other side of the Atlantic and then send it to somewhere in Europe to get packaged and send it back to here, yes. that's cheaper than producing next door. Yes. Uh, this is rationalization, uh, this is capitalist rationalization. It is actually cheaper to do it that way at the moment because a lot of the, because a lot of the costs are externalized, uh, because mass production reduces costs and so on. So this is the way the, our productive systems are, are organized at the moment. Yes, and it looks like it is uh, very difficult to change it because uh, there are some eco economical reasons. And what do you think it is possible to, to fight with these reasons? Because uh, people try to, to make more profit. And we, ecological movement, we have to show that there are more important things. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will be more expensive or it will take longer time, but we have to do other choices. Do you think it is possible to change? It's quite possible to change. Actually, it's a little too late not to change. Um, when we say, so how can I say this? So my feeling is that if we try to maintain the existing economic, socio-economic system, there's no way out. We are going to go around 4 or 5 degrees Celsius. That's the best case scenario for that is fashion. The worst case scenario is the entire collapse of civilizations. Um, and we have tried solving this through corporate mechanisms, through market mechanisms, through international agreements, through incentives, tax incentives, subsidies. All of that was tried in the last 20 years and it failed. That was plan A. I think we need a proper plan B that goes beyond this logic and says it's not only flawed logically, it was also tried out and it just doesn't work. So we have to stop focusing on profit and start focusing on people and the planet. Uh, what tips could you give to people who watch this video how they can uh, influence ecological situation in a good way? Um, this would be a harder question, say a year ago. Now it's a lot easier to answer because there are loads of grassroots groups and, and mass movements around the entire globe at the moment. Just join one. And, and make change happen directly. And what about uh, lifestyle? Yeah, uh, go out, stop being inside the house, go out to the street, do direct action, do civil disobedience, put your body on the line and make political change happen. This is the lifestyle change that we are proposing to people. Stop being individuals. That being individual is the wrong individual choice. Mm -hmm. Be collective, act collective. There is no, we as cons consumers do not have power because of the way the society is organized. We know that less than a hundred people have more wealth than half of the world population, which means that economically speaking, market, or market mechanisms uh, oriented speaking, half of the world population has less power than around 60 people. So that is the wrong territory to, to fight, this, fight this struggle. We propose to people to go to the street, take political action, take direct action to, ch to make social change. How did you like our meetings today? Would you like to see more interviews with eco-leaders from different countries? Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye.